In Scuderia Ferrari Racing News, we find ourselves at the Fiorano track with the imposing F104S, which was donated to Scuderia Ferrari by the 51st Squadron of the Italian Air Force. Several years ago, the aircraft took part in a special duel with Gilles Villeneuve's Ferrari 126CK, with the Canadian winning the day. The Starfighter was the first fighter plane to deliver exceptional performance, which the Formula One cars of today are still pursuing, with ever more extreme aerodynamic configuration. We went in search of an understanding of the aerodynamic data gathered from a race car from two perspectives, that of the driver, Felipe Massa, and that of Alex Cinelli, head of Aero Performance Group. Well, an idle test is a very different test compared to the, to the normal day of testing on the track. So normally when you, when you do idle test, you, you, you do all you do in the, in the very long straight, you know, uh, which the corner is a little bit less of, a, of uh, important, you know, compared to, to, the, to the test. Um, and we always do consistent uh, speed. Uh, so uh, from, I don't know, 150 all the time, 150, and then to maximum speed. So you're doing many, many times this kind of uh, uh, consistent speed to, to check every difference between one piece to the other piece. Uh, for example, one rear wing to another one, and, and everything which is related to the to the aerodynamic, you know. So is uh, is a very long, it's a very important because you you can understand on the consistent speed, you can understand the difference between uh, one piece to the other one, and uh, is a lot to do for for even uh, on the on the driver point of view, but also on the for the team. Very boring because. Uh, it's not a test. I mean, the the driver loves to go in the in the track to to drive on the limit, uh, to 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 have a comparison, to have the lap time, you know, to improve yourself looking the lap time, uh, to improve yourself even uh, looking the others, you know, to to have the competition, you know, with the other cars, with the other teams, with yourself as well. So when you are in the idle test. Nothing is important. The only important thing is to is to developing the car, is to looking for the for these pieces, which is very important. But uh, the driver is not really a driver. There is like a, a normal, for example, a normal uh, road car driver. You know, because you just uh, you just bring the car, so you're not uh, doing, you're not using the car. You know, you're just bringing the car around <laughs> just to to see which is the best uh, aerodynamic, uh, aerodynamic direction, actually. Aero test, because uh, they in the simulator, you, you're driving like you're doing the normal test. I mean, you, you have the lap time, so you, you, you're checking piece by piece, you're improving, you know, you see which, which direction is the best or is worst. So, and in the aero test, you, you're not really driving, I mean, you're just, uh, uh, checking the the difference between the pieces and uh, is very very boring. I mean, simu simulator is you closing on the on the on the room, uh, but uh, which is not very nice. But anyway, you leaving uh, what you leaving on the on the normal test. <laughs> When the car, when the car is running on the track, we have a lot of sensors, and we measure uh, over 150 sensors, and we use this to understand what the car is actually, how the car is behaving. So on top of the driver comments and the driver feedback, uh, and the lap times, of course, there's a lot of people back in the garage analyzing uh, data. So to analyze this data, we've got to acquire it. So via all the sensors on the car and the telemetry systems. Um, we, we measure all sorts of things like uh, the push rod load cells, so how much downforce the car is producing, um, the air speed, the temperatures, the accelerations, uh, the, the ride heights, what the suspension is doing, the temperatures for the engine. So basically every part of the car is looked at and there's a group of people that look at uh, each section of the car. So we've got all the, obviously all the electronics people to make sure that, we, that the car is functioning properly and we're acquiring all the data and then we have 
the aerodynamicists, um, the, the, the engineers, the mechanical engineers, the, the race engineers, um, the, the engine guys, and we're all looking at data that's being acquired while the car is running. An aero map is basically uh, a way of describing a measurement that we do on the track uh, that we basically don't do any normal running, so we stop uh, the, what the driver normally, on a normal lap the driver would tend to drive as fast as he can and try and push the car to the limit. On an aero map we don't, and during an aero mapping test, on a, even on a, on a Friday morning for example of a race weekend, what we do is we do um, specific manoeuvres that, that allow us to make a more consistent and, uh, and better measurement. So basically we may do a constant speed. So basically we run the car at say, for example, 200 kilometers per hour and we acquire data for a long period of time or a longer period of time than we would normally do during a normal run because the conditions are just more stable. And having stable conditions allows us to have a better measurement. And so when we do comparisons of components, we very often do this and uh, make sure that, uh, again, we have a good measurement to be able to then make a decision as to what we leave on the car. An aero test is very important because it allows us to measure the car's aerodynamic characteristics in a very uh, detailed, a more detailed fashion than what we can do during a normal, normal lap uh, at the track. So for example, say we take a race weekend, we have uh, very limited amounts of tyres, we have very limited running time, and we have to really focus on optimising the car and, and with the driver feedback and get the balance right and really push, try and make the car go as fast as possible. And that's our objective during a race weekend, uh, of which on the Friday we do some aero mapping and some aero tests to understand the, the, the aero performance of the components or developments that we bring, but we really have limited time. So during a dedicated aero test, our main objective is really focusing on understanding the aerodynamic characteristics of the car. And we do this by putting the car in different conditions. So for example, the car, the, the ride heights of the car can be high or low. We can have very different flap angles at the front or rear wing angles on the rear. And we can really test all different com combinations or all different uh, um, aspects of the car's um, tunable characteristics to try and determine the aerodynamic behavior of the car. And we compare that to, to the wind tunnel. And I'm trying to assess the correlation that I was mentioning earlier to understand differences. And at the same time, obviously during an, an aero test, we, we normally always bring new developments. And we try and assess whether these new developments work and make the car go faster or if there's problems. And uh, very often we test new components, we check that they work, we understand if there's any differences to what we expect from the wind tunnel, we quantify them. And then we go back and we say, okay, how do we optimize the car with this package to get the most out of it during a, during a race weekend? So then we'll go on a Friday, we'll let the driver test it, we'll confirm that the performance is there, the car goes quicker, and then we leave it on the car and try and win the race. The, the weather conditions uh, are very, very important because obviously when it's raining, for example, or very, very windy, the, the measurements become very, very difficult. We have to remember that the car's aerodynamics um, are a function of the, of the speed of the, and the, the airspeed over the car. And that airspeed over the car is very much a function of the, the conditions. So if it's very windy, um, or if we have very, a lot of wind from, for example, from the side, the car will see different, uh, the, will see different yaw angles, for example, in the car. We'll see the wind coming from different directions. And it, normally when, it's, when we have high wind, it's also very gusty. We have wind coming from different directions. And so the measurement is very, it's very difficult or more difficult to have a consistent measurement. So for example, you might test the same thing and different, during different tests, you might measure different things because the conditions haven't been the same. So we have to be uh, clever in accounting for these uh, changing of conditions. Obviously, the more stable the conditions, the easier the measurement's gonna be. Okay, very often we hear about uh, terms like car efficiency and drag, and, and obviously many people sometimes get confused, but it's really quite simple. The Formula One car, a bit like a simple, very, if you consider, for example, an airplane, an airplane has wings, and um, there's two fundamental forces that come at play. The faster you go, you go whether it's an airplane or Formula One car, um, the more downforce one generates with a car or, or, or an upwards force for, for an airplane. Um, so lift and downforce are the two terms and it's a vertical force that either pushes, in the case of a car, pushes the car down. In terms of an airplane, it, it lifts the airplane up. And at the same time that these forces are generated, we also have a, um, the drag force. So that's basically a, a resistance or basically to, to, to the, the forward direction. So it's a, it's a force that's pulling you back. 
and sort of the, the more downforce you generate, the more drag you also generate. And this is just simple physics. And one of the, the, the balance between the two is basically the term efficiency. So the more downforce the car has and the less drag the car has, the more efficiency the car will have and the faster it will go. On specific error tests, it might be, might be boring because the driver just very often, for example, if we go to a straight line error test, just goes up and down the whole day. But I think the, the race drivers and the test drivers know that the objective of, of an error test is to find performance and understand how to optimize the car and make the car go faster. So uh, during a Friday, for example, the race drivers uh, know very well that doing these sometimes the constant speed measurements or doing specific maneuvers for for assessing the aerodynamic performance is important for them because we get the data, we elaborate, we try and understand the, the performance impact of these new components and then make sure that we make the right decisions for the, for the race. Um, during during a, an aero test, for sure, it's not the most exciting uh, of things for a driver compared to finding, uh, finding uh, you know, uh, lap time from a, when driving around a normal track but it's a fundamental part of our job and a very important part because it's the best way we can, we can uh, it's the best thing we can do to make sure that we add performance and as you know aerodynamics and uh, aero performance uh, is fundamental to, to uh, Formula 1 car. Very often when we do aero tests you'll see what we call the, the roll hoop Peter which is a, it's a device that uh, allows us to measure the airspeed of the car uh, in, a, in a different position to where we normally measure it. Normally, we, on the nose of the car, we have a, a pito that measures the airspeed, which is what we use during, normally during a, a, a Friday or, in fact, during a normal race weekend. But when we go aero testing, we add this to the car, which allows us to make the measurement of the airspeed in a, in a higher position, and it's basically less influenced by um, the details around where the, the, the nose pito is normally affected by, and we have a nice, clean measurement of the of the air, uh, the air speed, which is basically a combination of both the car speed and the wind conditions, and uh, we, we, which is a fundamental parameter because the aerodynamics of the car, the downforce and the drag, are all a function of the air speed uh, around the car. We have two simply because, uh, as a fail-safe mode, in case one breaks and in case we have a we have a problem, we can switch to using the other one without really coming back into the garage and fixing it and wasting the run. So basically we got to, when we do error testing we've got to maximize the, our running time and this is just a, a simple way of making sure that if we have a problem it doesn't stop us and we can continue during the test. One of the things we do very often in when we do aero tests, but also you'll see it also on a, on a Friday running perhaps during a race weekend, is what we call flovis. This is simply applying a paint with the special powder that leaves a, a, the trace of the direction of the flow and the state of the flow, so the boundary layer and the really the, the, we try and understand the flow characteristics on the surface of the, of the car. We apply this to the front wing, the rear wing, the diffuser, generally anywhere on the surface of the car and uh, it gives us a lot of information as to where the flow is going and we do a lot of uh, comparisons with the wind tunnel and the CFD data and allows us to really understand the correlation and try and also give us an idea of, on the performance um, of, the, of the cars. It's the, the flow quality of the car is directly proportional to the performance of the car. So we really, uh, it's a very useful tool that uh, as aerodynamicists we try and do as much as possible. With the next test at Barcelona coming up soon, Felipe Massa assesses his first stint at the wheel of the new F2012 when he was testing at the Jerez de la Frontera circuit. Well, actually, I was in Maranello for two days of testing on the simulator, so we we check everything we did in, in Harris on the simulator. So um, every everything we work on the setup, everything we work on the new car, everything, every direction we follow uh, from from Harris, we try there. We see uh, also the difference between the the reality and the, on the simulator. And uh, on the second day, on the morning, I was still in Harris, but in the afternoon, I was in Barcelona already to start. You know the our direction in Barcelona, uh, which we're gonna start now. So, and uh, I think 
it was very important, you know, just to have some ideas, not just for Barcelona, but also already for the first race. And, uh, and that was actually my job these two days in the simulator. Well, the main feeling is that we are still at the beginning. It's a lot to do, it's a lot to work on the car. It's a lot to, to find the right uh, direction in terms of developing, you know, the car. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't uh, uh, drove as much as we supposed to. So um, it's always better to do more than 100 laps per day and it was not the case. Um, but anyway, it's still a new car. So it was the first time we drove with this car on the track. And uh, I hope now everything is more or less prepare for, for, for Barcelona and also uh, we find the, the right direction for, you know, to have the, the right car on the first race. And that's it for now, so see you next time.